you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have Twitch. Have we have we met before? I don't think so. No, no, I would definitely know if I met you. Like you, you were. <laughs> we would remember. Yeah, I would definitely remember. Wait, have you met some incarnation of him? Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm going to think about it throughout the. Time. What vibes are you getting from me right now? I don't know. It's the word, the name Thomas. Thomas. Thomas keeps coming to me. Damn, yeah. you look familiar. I do. In a good way or a bad way? I really hope we figure it's out some, this. Funny it's idea. something nostalgic, like my childhood or something. Oh shit! I might come from a different life. Are Maybe. you feeling a good vibe? Did you like him? It, this it's Thomas like character? my stomach inside is like tickling so much and turning over. You know, like a tickling feeling. Oh wow! This got to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Joe, if you don't st get out of my vibe, could y'all get a shirt out of here? Because it was a new sound and new feeling from. A musician, like he definitely helped propel a new Say, wave. Say, propel one more time. Propel. One more time. Propel. One more time. Propel. Am I fucking up? Are you getting closer to figuring out who yeah. this? She's listening to you. No, I'm looking at your mouth. Say, propel. Thomas. Propel. Everything she says has like this sexual undertone. I don't know if this is. Sexual. I think that's you. No. <laughs> so I like your, like your... Be Thomas. It makes me. It makes me want to eat cereal. Whatever. Whatever I'm feeling about you, cereal and what kind of cereal? Uh, any any cereal? cereal that we had in the seventies. He seems like he would be something with <laughs> marshmallows and a lot of colors. Hey. Yeah, something. Love. Hey, H -O -M. I might be uh, I might be an old soul from then. She might be reconnecting. She might be bringing me back. So basically, I keep hearing that in my mind when I think of you. So whenever Thomas, Thomas got in the palm of his hands, I need to hurt him with this. <laughs> now you know Erica plays way too much, so now it doesn't take long before academics gets in his feeling. Try to play me. I never fuck with Erica Badu after she came on my show and she was trying to be funny. Bitch, I don't fuck with you after that. Nigga, what's up now? What we finna do? Bitch, you an old asshole just keep getting fucked by all these young niggas. What's poppin'? What we finna do? I ain't fuck with none of y'all niggas. Still. Bitch, call Tyrone, call Jamal, call everybody. Big Ack is here. None of y'all niggas ain't finna do shit, my nigga. I'm telling all y'all the real about it. I see that bitch follow me. I'm like, bitch, why are you following me? I don't fuck with you. I'm not in on no joke with you. You and your little Twitter following or whatever the fuck you got. Bitch, you came up in here raving around Sage and all that type of shit. Fuck y'all niggas. So now he comes for the city girls and he is just so disrespectful toward women, almost hateful. I thought men only get that upset over baby mamas and child support. Secondly, I could tell that her whole act has been a fraud. You know, in trying to be edgy and trying to like continue because they, like Carisha's 30. Trying to continue competing with some of these young provocative girls who are saying a lot of shit. Chicks bragging about STDs, old type of raw dog queen. She said on her show, she likes to get peed on. In case you're all wondering what exactly a golden shower is, here's the definition. Golden shower is slang for the practice of urinating on another person for sexual pleasure as part of Urolania. She now came back to say she doesn't, that was a lie. She's never done, never done in her life. And it reminded me why the city girls are to me the biggest fraud in music. I'm glad Saucy Santana is standing up for Young Miami. It seems the men only stand for each other and that doesn't make you suspicious. You know, Saucy Santana doesn't play about Young Miami and he had some words for academics which apparently got him shook to the point he had to go get help from big homie WAC 100. You? That's how she felt about you. Me being her best friend, that don't have nothing to fucking do with me. In the hood, and in a lot of urban cultures, when you see boys that are acting feminine, that are being messy, that are being extra and doing fag shit, that's what you address them as. Even as me being a gay man, I don't move like a fag. And it's a lot of other gay boys that's feminine or whatever, but everybody don't move like fags. You move like a fag, and that's why bitches is always calling you that. It don't have nothing to do with nobody else. You always on the internet starting shit with bitches. I wake up this morning, you starting shit with Glorilla, a girl. What the fuck? Could you bother her up? What the fuck are you doing interviews? Keep talking about young Miami for you think nobody won't press you up. And that's the motherfucking problem. We was hoping to see you at the Roots picnic, but apparently it was the it was the wrong day. You nobody don't ever know where you at, but we all have public 
flyers and posters on our motherfucking page. So Tuesday, Young Miami has a party in, in, in Miami. She having a Halloween party. Pull up on us. Pull up and come. And Academics, you keep talking about what the fuck. All right, let's put the shit on the flow. Vlad TV, I never met you a day in my motherfucking life. When I'm when I'm in um New York, I have a driver. His name is Mario. I don't catch Ubers. I don't like Ubers. I don't like to be left nowhere. I like to run errands. And if I have to go, when I have to go, I like my driver outside. Anything can happen. I don't like to be left anywhere. I don't even ride Ubers around fucking Atlanta. Everybody know I have a driver. His name is Smokey in Atlanta. I never met you nowhere. If, if you did reach out for an interview 50 fucking years ago and I said I was scared because your shit is probably a lot of controversy and I didn't know what the fuck you was going to ask me. And that was in a joking manner. I'm never scared to pull up on no nigga. So, Vlad TV, if you want to interview, if anything you want to ask me, anything you want to talk about the next time I'm in New York. But you know you could kick it with her. The industry has changed her. The industry has now morphed her into something that she's not. She'll never be a sex icon. But she tried to clean herself up. That's the problem with her, and that's what's going on good with, with uh, Sexy Red. Sexy Red ain't trying to clean up like that. Sexy Red is still that like same ghetto bitch. But Glorilla fucked up there. I told y'all this months ago. Oh, Glorilla is starting to lose us. She thinks she's something she's not. We'll never look at you like Ice Spice. Bitch, you built like Sid the Sloth from Ice Age. I'm sorry. You just the bitch who we call a nigga. Like, you know that you know that one homegirl that you don't even look at it like a girl, but she like a nigga? That's how we view Glorilla. You a ghetto bitch. You a ratchet hoe. That's what it is. Don't start cleaning up. And that's where you fucked up. I don't know if it was CMG, Yo Gotti, I fuck with you. I don't know if it's CMG or maybe somebody else, handlers, who knows. But regardless, in the last few months, Glorilla has been on a downward spiral. She dropped an atrocious song. Fa, fa, fa. Like, it's It's horrible. I could probably play you a snippet. It probably won't even do the justice. But I feel I need to play the snippet for y'all to understand how garbage Glorilla has came to when she, when started, she started off lightning hot. This is the this is the atrocity. And by the way, Fabio Ford, I love you. This is no strays to you. But get your check, my brother. But Glorilla was clearly lost. Where is a cool number? Ta -ta -ta. My man, my man, my man. That boy is a da -da -da. garbage. As my man Joe Budden would say, a two pack of fucking ass. Now, again, I'm not going to indict her whole career on one song. We have to be honest and we have to allow artists to miss and try things and, you know, kind of pivot. That's all a part of the game. It would be unfair if we think an artist has to be perfect, right? However, I think the majority of people who like Glorilla has kind of said the same things I have. They just don't have the platform that I have, right? Now, again, what have I said? Let me re reiterate. Glorilla, we like her because she's a ratchet hood rat bitch. Sorry, I'm, I'm not being politically correct. I'll tell you what it is. She came in looking like this. Her hair was fucked up. Everything about her was fucked up. Look at her in the FNF video. She looked a hot mess. But we know a bitch that look a fucking hot mess. Gap tooth teeth kind of, you know what I mean? Lime green. She got the little fucking little baby hairs that's not babying. The wig looks atrocious. Uh, jail tats. No titties. Flat ass. She kind of looked like a nigga. Dyke vibes. That, that you feel... Like you're on some high horse that if somebody doesn't agree with your music or don't like it, they're either hating or you feel some moral superiority. Let me put you in your place as I need to. Glorilla, you've been barely hot for a year. I don't give a fuck what money um, Yo Gotti done gave you. You're a peon in this shit. You had a spark when you started. Now niggas are saying you garbage. You ain't been in this shit that long, baby girl. You ain't been in this shit like a Nicki Minaj for... 10, 15 years that could really stand on your shit. You should be trying to make it to next year. Instead, you're doing all the things that's fucking it up. Now, let me give a precursor to what I'm going to show you guys um, in a few minutes. Glorilla is trying to embody the energy that she should have had the whole time. The ghetto ratchet hood bitch energy. But she's trying to embody it versus the wrong people. Baby girl, you can't embody that hood I'm a ratchet bitch energy versus Kai Sinat and academics. You look lame. You look lame. I, I want to point this out. 
You look lame. Now, let me give you the things that has subsequently happened. Okay. Kai Snat. Uh, let me see. Can I find the clip? It's probably going to take a while. According to We Got You Covered, Kai Kanat is a streamer and YouTuber that made history when he became the Twitch streamer with the most subscribers of all time earlier this February. The young social media star is known for his comedic YouTube videos and for streaming himself playing games like Valorant and Minecraft for his over 300,000 active Twitch subscribers. Recently, Sanat made headlines when a PlayStation 5 gift card giveaway he hosted ended up shutting down NYC's Union Square and led to being detained by police. Don't believe, look at this clip. Now Tonight, charges filed against a social media star for allegedly sparking a massive riot in Manhattan's Union Square, leading to 65 arrests and multiple injuries. Through cones, Usually through people want to know who caused all this chaos and how Sanat obtained such a huge social media following. Now we all know who Kai is. On my own damn page, I do post a lot, sorry. But basically, the history of Kai Sanat and Glorilla, Kai Sanat basically disagreed or didn't like one of Glorilla's songs. What are you talking about? They blocked and they gonna stay there. You made your bed, you gotta lay there. They say I'm blocked. They must record that right there. I don't get no. He know why he blocked. Over here to stay right beside us to watch the line. Don't come on my. <laughs> Wait. No, I'm about to show these cute nice ass. Don't come on my. 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 Glorilla pimp. Oh my gosh, bro. Glorilla. Do the cha cha cha. Hit it. Left foot now, y'all. Move to the left. Right foot, left foot. No. I love Glow, bro. I love Glow, but no. Cha cha. Do the cha cha cha. Some other black American legends have also been vocal about academics and his trolling. In a post, he wrote, Some hip-hop pioneers are dusty. El Cool J responded with, Don't ever confuse being rich with making a contribution to our culture. After his latest fiasco with saucy Santana Queen Latifah stepped in to say, It's crazy to me how DJ Academics is crying, scared to say anything to Saucy Santana because he's a gay man and he's scared of getting canceled, but has said some of the most outlandish, vile, disrespectful, and demeaning things to black women with absolutely no fear whatsoever. It brings me back to Malcolm X's quote, The most disrespected, unprotected, and neglected person in America in the black woman. Well, that's all for now. You leave your thoughts in the comments until next time. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.